Marses. Marses are a small wetlands that are a mix of aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. Many often include reeds and rushes, which are perfect for hiding small waterfowl. Why am I telling you this? Because today I will talk to you about some of the birds of BC that inhabit these marshes and wetlands. The first bird I'm going to talk about is one of the most widespread and common birds of North America, and you have probably seen this bird in any small body of water around the mallard or wild duck. As you can see, these birds are obsessed with bird feeding. These large dabbling ducks have been introduced to South America, parts of Africa, New Zealand, and even the Falkland Islands. They live all across North America. They feed on aquatic vegetation and often prey on invertebrates, such as beetles and dragonflies. They usually nest on banks near water. Predators include hawks and eagles, along with carnivorous mammals. Mallards actually benefit from human alterations and have become invasive species in many places. Mallards will form pairs in October and November. Nesting is a very hard time because the duck has to find a place where there are no predators. Fledging for the chicks takes 50 to 60 days. These are the ducklings. As you can see, ducklings are fully capable of swimming, even as soon as they hatch. These chicks must stay close to their mother, though, for protection and guidance. And, at the moment, they are being watched by a hungry, red-eared slider. This slider has already been chased off by the mama duck twice, yet it still continues to get as close to the ducklings as possible. Eventually, the grumpy old turtle moves off. These turtles are generally harmless and probably wouldn't attack. But if it were a hawk, it would be a different story. The ducklings are growing bigger every day. Uh-oh, take cover. Annoying birds coming through. Oh, that's better. This chick lazily swims around in search of food. I find it amazing that this little mallard will someday become a full-fledged adult mallard. Now where did Mama go? Oh, never mind. Mallard nests often get stolen by other ducks, and even other mallards. This mother calls for her chicks to come over. There is some kind of threat nearby. These immature mallards will soon become adults. And then the cycle continues on and on again. Hybrids often occur and cause concern for several endangered species that could become extinct if hybridization continues. The pale looking mallard is a hybrid. Mallards can fly as fast as a flash because they can fly up to speeds of 55 miles an hour. And the oldest living mallard lived to be 27 years old. Another very common but unique species of bird is the American coot, also known as the mud hen. Many believe these to be ducks, but they actually belong to the rail family. Groups of coots are actually known as covers or rafts. This group of coots is looking for food. Their toe scales enable them to walk on land by folding back with each step they take. 
They are found year-round in British Columbia and the southwestern United States, all the way down to Mexico. They feed mainly on algae and some aquatic plants. When they build nests, they usually will build them amidst reeds for protection against predators. This is why Mars areas come in handy for many different types of birds. At the moment, these chicks are being fed. As you can see, these chicks have an orange plume covering the front of their bodies, due to parent selection, as it is called. They are known as chick ornaments. The plumes eventually bleach out after six days and slowly continue to fade away. However, coots are often preyed upon by bald eagles, skunks, and raccoons. Coot is often more than 80% of a bald eagle's diet. This is why they stay together in groups. The coots are growing older. The fall has reached this small alkaline lake and has created a perfect meal for these coots. Salty seaweed, just as they like it. More juveniles join in the fun. These coots must prepare for a very long winter. The oldest known American coot lived to be over 22 years old. And if coots don't feel like they want to hunt, they just steal from other birds. That's new. This next bird is a small but unique species of waterfowl, the bufflehead. These ducks are actually sea ducks, but are also found in marshes. These small ducks are highly active and will constantly be seen diving around repeatedly. They do not form flocks. However, when a small group dives for food, they have their own sentry to watch for predators. They feed on insects, aquatic plants, and sometimes fish eggs. They nest in tree cavities and flicker nests. They will often take very small cavities, though, so as not to compete with other tree-dwelling birds. This bufflehead is taking its peaceful afternoon swim. After the eggs hatch, the babies will leap out of the cavities, just like the wood duck, which we will talk about next. The babies fledge after about 50 days of age. Eagles are the biggest predators around for these guys. Buffleheads are easy prey because they're so small. Next, we'll talk about a very colorful species of marsh duck. Since the bufflehead is the smallest diving duck or sea duck in North America, it's amazing that it can travel at 48 miles an hour while flying. And also, it's one of the only ducks that does not have to run on top of the water to take off. The wood duck, or Carolina duck, is one of the most colorful species of waterfowl in North America. These medium-sized perching ducks nest in tree cavities and hollows near water. They will line their nests with feathers and other soft objects. This enables the wood ducks to be safer from any ground predators that might take their young. Females lay 7 to 15 eggs. When the young wood ducks hatch, they actually have to jump out of the tree without help from the mother in order to get to the water and find food. The ducks prefer nesting over water for a softer landing, but they will nest up to 140 meters away from shoreline if they have to. Some chicks will have to jump from 15 feet high. They do have a special feature that makes them quite unique, however. They have claws on their feet that allow them to perch on trees. That is why they are called perching ducks. They are the second most hunted duck, other than the mallard, in North America. They also have begun to grow tame in a few areas and compete with mallards for the best bird seed. And when that happens, things can get a little nasty.
Joshua Duck scrounges for food as his friend gives him a wet willy. They feed on berries, acorns, and of course, bird seed. Wood ducks are omnivorous and will hunt in the land as well as the water. And I thought that wood ducks were strong flyers, but instead they're weak because they can only reach speeds of 30 miles an hour. The mallard almost doubles that. Wood duck, you're so slow! Now, I'm going to talk about a more subtle colored bird, the gadwall. This duck is often mistaken for female mallards. This gadwall is preening itself. They are also common, but perhaps not as known. The name gadwall is of unknown origin, but they've had it ever since. As you can see, they like to spruce themselves up a bit. The plumage actually, to me, looks quite elegant. Gotta shake those tail feathers. These gadwalls are floating around. They feed by dabbling for plant food with its head under the water. They do not tend to flock as much like coots and are fairly quiet. In the nesting season, young birds will get fed insects and mollusks. This female gadwall takes a bath by dancing in the water. Next, we'll talk about a bird that is closely related to the American coot. The gadwall is closely related to the falsated duck, and they're both related to the widgeon. But, also, birds love them because they are very subtle in appearance. This is a Sora. It is a type of water bird and is often called a Sora rail or Sora crake. Nesting takes place from May to July. They nest in concealed locations among vegetation. The female lays 10 to 12 eggs in a cup, safe out of Mars vegetation. Then both parents will feed the young, and in a month, they will be able to fly and become more independent. Soras constantly forage while walking and swimming, just like this one. They feed on seeds, insects, and snails. They also eat a whole range of different vegetation. They often prefer shallow water than deep water. Mmm, yum yum. They are often more heard than they are seen since they hide in vegetation all the time. And that concludes the final bird of this episode. The Sora can travel at speeds while flying of around 45 miles an hour. And a group of Soras is called a winnie. Like a horse winnie? Like this? <coughs> or what? These birds all rely on the marsh environment to protect them and find food. Next, we'll look at birds that inhabit ponds and larger bodies of water. See you later, and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Birds are awesome, yeah.